Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out a really interesting little laptop that I recently picked up on a Black Friday sale. And what makes this laptop so interesting, at least to me, is the APU they opted to use. It has the AMD Ryzen 7 7520U, and if you're familiar with these, we've got Zen 2 CPU cores and RDNA 2 graphics. AMD actually called these Mendocino APUs, and uh, we've taken a look at a lower-end version, a Ryzen 3. I haven't been able to get my hands on the Ryzen 5 until now, and I'm really interested to see what we can do with this. Like I mentioned, this was a Black Friday deal. I picked this up on Amazon for $249, but definitely keep an eye on it because Cyber Monday's coming up and it'll probably go on sale again. In this video, we're going to be testing the overall performance. We'll test out some 4K video playback, some gaming, and especially some emulation. But before we jump into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, so what we have here is a 14 inch IPS display and overall I do think it looks like a really nice little laptop. It's got a backlit keyboard and at 249, this is definitely something that I could recommend. These retail at about $350, and at that price point, you could definitely find something else. But when these are on sale, this would actually be a really good budget laptop. I think it looks pretty good, but there is one thing holding this back if you want to do some newer gaming on this, and that's really going to be the RAM amount. This version here only has 8 gigs, and it's LP DDR5 running at 5,500 megatransfers per second but it's soldered to the board and there's no way to upgrade it. Now with some of these newer laptops, I've actually seen half of it be LP DDR5 soldered to the board and you get a single DIMM where you can upgrade the RAM. Unfortunately, that's not the case with this here. When it comes to IO, over here on the right hand side, we've got a full size USB 3.0 port and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the left hand side, power in, USB type C, full size HDMI and one more full size USB 3 port. Not a ton of I.O., but it can definitely get you by. Again, I was really hoping that I could get in here and add a little more RAM to it, but unfortunately, as you can see, it's just soldered to the board. Basically, the only thing we'll be able to upgrade here is the SSD. This did come with a 512 gigabyte drive, and you could upgrade to Wi-Fi 6 if you wanted to. This does come pre-installed with Wi-Fi 5, and in my opinion, I mean, it's more than enough for a laptop like this. And with this and a lot of newer laptops on the market, we don't get a dedicated Ethernet port, but we've got a lot of USB here that we could utilize if we really needed to. Now, when it comes to the main specs, like I mentioned, this is powered by a Mendocino chip. It's the AMD Ryzen 5 7520U. Four cores, eight threads. It's got a base clock of 2.8 gigahertz and a boost up to 4.3. And with the way the power is set up on this in performance mode, yeah, I mean, we can actually boost up to 4.3. And when it comes to the iGPU, we've got the Radeon 610M. This is based on RDNA 2, but instead of having something like 8 or 12 CUs, we've only got two running at 1900 megahertz. It's definitely going to bring that GPU performance down, but these were meant to be budget chips. And with the price on a lot of these Mendocino laptops coming down, it might be worth it to some people. We get 8 gigabytes of LP DDR5 at 5,500 mega transfers per second. I'm sure you could get one of these with 16, but you're going to pay a little more than $249. A 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. It's got a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, Wi Fi 5, Bluetooth 5.1, and this is running Windows 11 Home right out of the box. Alright, so like I mentioned, this is definitely a chip I've been wanting to test out, and as you can see, we've got that 7520U, 4 cores, 8 threads, only 8 gigabytes of RAM, and that's kind of going to really hold us back here with this laptop. Uh, if we had 16, we could definitely run some more games. 
Unfortunately, something like Doom Eternal just won't launch. Gives me a low memory allocation error. Just like uh, Street Fighter 6 and Forza Horizon 5 did start up, but it just doesn't have enough RAM to keep it going. Uh, unfortunately, I had some crashes there. If I can get my hands on something like this with 16 gigs, we will be testing some more out. But I was able to get a bunch of games up and running and emulators. Now, the first thing I wanted to see here was what kind of TDP we're running at. Want to make sure we've got enough power there for, you know, higher clocks on the CPU and iGPU. And for this, I've got core temp up. I've got our power here. Just run a stress test here. And from what I've seen so far, we're at 25, 26 watts. I have seen it boost up to 28, but then come right back down. Uh, we're down right there at 25 right now, and that's maxing out all four cores and eight threads. And overall, set up like this, it's not bad. Another thing we can see here is that CPU temp. Now, the fan has spun up in this laptop. It's not horribly loud. I mean, we don't have, like, gaming laptop jet sounds coming out of this thing. But you can definitely hear it, and we're only at 81 degrees Celsius. Been running at 25 watts for a little while. So the cooling system does look small, but it's actually quite sufficient for this little chip. When it comes to using this as an everyday laptop, it's actually pretty snappy. We don't have Wi-Fi 6, we've got Wi-Fi 5 here, and uh, everything loads up pretty quickly. Let's head over to YouTube real quick. Check out some uh, video playback here. Find a demo, and we'll just go with this. Full screen, stats for nerds. Bring it up to 4K. And of course, on the built-in 1080p display, 4K is way overkill, but I always like testing it just to see if, you know, the chip has enough power. And this Ryzen 7520U actually handles 4K really well with that RDNA 3-based iGPU. Going from HDMI over to a monitor, you can do 4K 60 out, HDMI 2.0, so you wouldn't have an issue there if you wanted to connect this to a larger monitor. By the end of this here, which is 4K 60 HDR, we only had four drop frames, which isn't bad at all, and this is something you'd never notice unless you had Stats for Nerds up and running showing you how many you dropped. So yeah, this little chip handles video playback just fine. Now I want to move over to some gaming. And first up, we've got Minecraft. This is the Windows Store version. Now every once in a while, I did notice a little hiccup here and there. It would dip down to around 56, but overall, I mean, we had a pretty smooth experience here. So playing Minecraft or Roblox on this would work out really well. Now I want to test something else. Moving over to one of my favorite games, we've got OG Skyrim. 1080p, low settings, and at medium, we we're right there, about 56 FPS. So I dropped it down to low. You could definitely do a little bit of a mix, but it's going to handle these older games very, very well. Source games are going to run just fine at 1080p, medium settings. We could take this up to high, turn V-Sync on and have a really nice, steady 60 FPS. But with Left 4 Dead 2 at medium 1080p, we had an average of 111 FPS. And I figured we'd be able to run games like this just fine. I mean, those Valve Source games don't take much nowadays. So Half-Life 2, Portal 2, games like that are going to be awesome on this little chipset. But the next thing I wanted to test out was some emulation, because I can actually see this chip being really good for it. And the first one we have is the Dolphin emulator for some GameCube. I went straight into it with F-Zero GX. We're using the DirectX 11 backend, 720p. We're only pulling around 18 watts, and it's running flawlessly. I mean, we're getting really great performance here. And at the native resolution with this game, it only pulls around 12 watts, and it's going to run just as well. So it looks like we've got GameCube and Wii covered with this little system. Next up, we've got some PS2, and this was actually really impressive. Here's God of War 2 at 720p using the DirectX 11 backend. You can see we get a couple dips every once in a while, but overall, I mean, this is some really great performance coming out of this little chip, and it really comes down to those higher clocks on that CPU. I mean, as you can see, we're at 4.2 here, and that's all four cores. It would be nice if this was a little eight-core setup, but four cores and eight threads for these emulators seems to work just fine. And the final thing I tested was PS3. Now, unfortunately, going up to a really hard to emulate game like Skate 3 kind of falls on its face. We only got an average of around 52 FPS, so it's not full speed. But there are a lot of games that will run at full speed. Here's Tekken 6. Another one I tested was Demon Souls that runs at 30 FPS natively. And we can run these all day long. 
But as you can see, our total package power is now at 24 to 25 watts with these higher end emulators. Okay, so I mean, for being a budget laptop, not too bad. I actually do like the fact that we've got a pretty decent screen here when you compare it to others on the market at the same price point. A lot of the other ones don't come in with a 1080p display. Not the brightest in the world, but we do have a backlit keyboard. And I think the design is really classic for these Acer laptops. It looks pretty good in my opinion. If you're able to find this for Black Friday or Cyber Monday at $249 and you're in the market for a budget laptop, yeah, this is something that I could definitely recommend, even with 8 gigs of RAM. But remember, going into this, it's not going to be a 1080p AAA gaming machine the way it is. But web browsing, video playback, document editing, you could even get some photo editing out of the way on this. It would work out just fine. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this chipset, just let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.